Good morning, all. Uh, at the very outset, let me thank BOS and the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'll be talking on the bearing options and then uh, probably uh, touch base on to the head sizes that we can use in uh, total hip replacement. And uh, a little, little bit of uh, theory for uh, bearing options and then we will go on to the... Uh, thank you. So if you see tribology, it's the study of friction, lubrication and wear of surfaces interacting under an applied load and relative motion. So that's what we're talking about, tribology. And we can see that uh, from the earlier uh, total hip replacements which were done, uh, there were a lot of failures because of cement disease or polyethylene wear particles causing uh, loosening. And because of this, the entire uh, the concentration was done on having uh, alternative bearings which are there. Just to uh, sum up, the wares are of four types, abrasive, adhesive, third body, and fatigue wear, which I'm not going to go in detail about because we're getting more on the uh, bearing options, but you should be aware of these because while choosing your implant, it is very important. And what is this wear going to do? This wear is going to have mechanical and biological properties, uh, which is going to cause loosening. So why are we talking about advanced bearing? The chromium cobalt and polyethylene have been for ages since 1960s, Sir George Chandler who had introduced a total hip replacement. But there have been a lot of changes as uh, vis a vis the age at which we are doing a total hip replacement, the increased activity of the patients that we are looking at, the expectancy of the patient as well as the implant, and now the patient expectations out of uh, total hip replacements. All these had led to the uh, research into advanced bearings and those can be divided into two. Either they are hard or they are soft. Okay. Uh, now the advanced bearing, hard on soft bearings, which we, we have it uh, in our armamentarium is either chromium cobalt uh, on polyethylene, ceramic on polyethylene, or oxenium on polyethylene. Whereas hard on hard bearings are ceramic on ceramic, metal on metal, and metal on ceramic. Now, since ages, this ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene has been used, and there have been a lot of changes in this ultra-high molecular poly uh, polyethylene uh, because it has given good results in the past, but then also we are looking at wear particles. So to reduce these wear particles, cross-linking of polyethylene was done, and that was done by doing radiation with the dosages of uh, typically between 5 to 10 megarads, and post-radiation, there would be this thermal processing to take care of the free radicals, which was been done by remelting and annealing, and then the process of sterilization. All these three are important in cross-link uh, polyethylene because these are the ones which gives you the characteristic of a particular polyethylene. Now, why cross-linking? The cross-linking has reduced the 40 to 70% reduction in the wear compared to the conventional polyethylene that we used to use earlier. The 10-year survivorship of 95.3% of XLP with head size 32 has been reported by AJRs in 2017. It also causes 22% reduction in the osteolysis. When we compare the mean linear wear of XLP versus conventional, it is 0.22 millimeter versus 0.04. So you can see that the conventional polyethylene is now no more used, except for a few companies which may give you for the cemented hip replacements or maybe some dual mobility cups which they may give you a conventional polyethylene. Rest all the polyethylene has been replaced by highly cross-linked polyethylene. But of course, there is also a downside to the cross-linked polyethylene because uh, it causes increased fatigue failure. Now that is typically because of changes in the mechanical properties due to cross-linking, which decreases the tensile strength, ductility, modulus, toughness, and crack propagation. So if you look at it like this, there's a win-win situation. Now you know that you have a cross-linked polyethylene, which we can use it on the acetabular side. Now the question comes, what is the head that you're going to use? Whether you're going to use uh, chromium cobalt, whether you're going to use uh, ceramic, or you're going to use oxenium. Now that depends on several factors like corrosion resistance, hardness, scratch resistance, the effect of trunnion that you're going to use, surface roughness, and strength. But to look into the literature, there is no randomized control trial where they have checked COCR versus ceramic on XLP. So it is yet to be, to be published as far as this data is concerned. But the joint registry data, which are they are showing that there are low revisions for ceramic versus the metallic. So there are various uh, pros and cons for uh, you know uh, the COCR, which has been conventionally used. As you know, that it's cost effective. It has been long history. It's been there for ages, and you have multiple head and liner options which you can use for metal on poly. 
But yes, because of the poly being cross-linked, you are prone for cracking and scratches because of the metal. Now, there's one paper of, in Journal of Arthroplasty in 2013, which says that there's a 100% survivorship of total hip replacement done in young patients younger than 50 years of age with a 10-year follow-up, where they have used metal on XLP. So out and out, you can see that the XLP is basically the best option as far as the polyethylene is concerned. The ceramic uh, head, if you are using it, of course, it's going to cause less wear. There's not going to be squeaking if you're going to use in a polyethylene rather than a ceramic liner. That there's no question of chipping or fracture, and you have liner options which are there. And if you are going to use XLP, you have that cross-linking which is going to last longer and with lesser wear particles. So it is the best of both of the worlds as far as the head as well as the acetabulum is concerned. Same thing is on oxenium. It's a ceramicized metal head, so there is no question of fracture or chipping. It doesn't have uh, nickel, so technically you can say that it is hypoallergenic and less osteolysis. So ceramic and oxygen would definitely would have a uh, upper hand as compared to the metal. Now metal and metal was very common in 1970s and between 2000 to 2010 they, it had regained its uh, you know an, uh, market and it, uh, quite a lot of patients been done on metal on metal, but large head metal on metals led to five to ten times increase in the serum metal ions and which then in turn causes carcinogenesis, toxicity and metal sensitivity along with the pseudo tumor like thing also called as alveol lesion because of which they were withdrawn. So large head metal on metals total hip replacements have been withdrawn around in 2010 and now they're no more available. The revision rates were almost double or triple as compared to the standard THRs and that has been proven and been reported in the literature. If you go on to the ceramic on ceramic bearing, there have been various generations. The first three generations being Biolox Forte, whereas the fourth generation is a Delta Pink ceramic that we are using it now. Now ceramics have been the uh, uh, favorites of a lot of orthopedic surgeons because it had smaller grains, so there was reduced friction, high hardness, so which led to lower wear rate, and high wettability due to which the fluid lubrication and all was good. The longevity was again very good, 97.54% at 10 years, which has been reported in severe, uh, several joint registries and also in Journal of Arthroplasty. The resistance of wear is definitely better for ceramic on ceramic com as compared to XLP or polyethylene standard and it has again been reported. The osteolysis have been less and there are no giant cells when you are using a ceramic. So it is mainly a fibrocytic and few macrophages. So no giant cell reaction, so no severe osteolysis, osteolysis that you would be seeing in metal on poly. But yes, there was a major issue of squeaking in ceramic on ceramic, and the incidence was from 1 to 8.3%, which the literature has reported. But probably the squeaking was more implant specific, and the reason still unknown, but probability was that there was some edge loading, stripe wear, and some kind of impingement in a particular design, which led to squeaking. So there are a lot of limitations as if you're going for ceramic on ceramic, then there is one head size per cup diameter, then as far as the lateralized liners or elevated rims are concerned, you don't get them. So it becomes a little difficult in equalizing the leg lengths and maximizing the stability. One minute also, left, sir. Also, as, as long as um, the liner is concerned, if you don't sit the liner well, then there are chances of chipping which can occur. So if this liner is not sitting well, then it can lead to impingement and early failure. It can also lead to fracture of the ceramics, which was earlier seen in 10% of cases when Biolux Forte was used, but in Delta Ceramic, it is around 0.1%. So if you see the wear rate and the osteolysis, if it is more than 200 microns, then it was uh, more, uh, the 30% survivorship was seen in 20 years. So if you see this, is typically says that if you're using ceramic on ceramic or ceramic on poly or any metal on metal or metal on cross-link polyethylene, it is less than 20 microns and the least is for the ceramic on ceramic, which is one micron. So this is the wear rate of different bearings. Uh, and definitely this is what we all want. But if you, in nutshell, if you want, in young and active patients, probably if you're using hard on hard bearing, then ceramic on ceramic is the best. But cup placement is important because if, we, uh, if it, placement is not proper, then it can lead to impingement, excessive wear and fracture. Hard on soft, you can use ceramic or oxygenium on highly cross-linked polyethylene. If it's a less active, more than 70 years, then probably COCR on XLP can be the choice. As far as head size is a concern, it is dictated by the cup size. The larger the head, more is the wear, volumetric wear. Range of movement is bigger, but theoretically, 
what what the literature says no benefit in hip range of movement or hip function when head size more than 36 mm is used so 36 mm is a widely used head which I is beyond beyond that i'll just take few seconds beyond that uh, it doesn't give you any advantage the risk of revision was less with higher head as compared to the lesser head and the volumetric wear was more of 32 mm if you are using metal but for ceramic the volumetric wear was not more the long term survivorship is improved with 32 mm of metal on poly compared to larger or smaller so if you use larger or smaller it is not going to lead to any long term survivorship so 32 mm head is recommended for metal on poly but if you are using larger heads then ceramic on poly would be preferred thank you